Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 39. In this video, we're going to learn about polynomial functions. So essentially what we're going to look at in this lesson, we're going to look at polynomial functions and operations with polynomial functions. So I want to just start out with a polynomial function. We have f of x is equal to, we have negative x cubed plus 5x minus 10. Now, in a previous lesson in Algebra 2, I taught you about function notation. So if I ask you to find f of 0, f of 2, or f of negative 2, at this point you should be able to do that. Essentially what I'm doing, if I ask for something like f of 0, I'm saying what is the function's value if the independent variable x is 0? So I would have negative, I'd plug in a 0 for x, and that would be cubed, plus 5 times, I'd plug in a 0 for x, then minus 10. So we can see that these two would be 0, right? So I'd have 0 plus 0, which is 0, then minus 10, which is just negative 10. So f of 0 is negative 10, or the function's value when the independent variable x is 0 is negative 10. All right, what if we did f of 2? Okay, f of 2. Same concept. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace every x with a 2. So negative, and then I have a 2 being plugged in for x. This is cubed, then plus 5, multiplied by, again, 2 is plugged in for x, then minus 10. So 2 cubed is 8. I'd want the opposite of that. Notice how the negative is not inside of parentheses. It's outside here. Okay, so the opposite of 8 would be negative 8. Then plus, we have 5 times 2, which is 10. Then we have minus 10. So we know 10 minus 10 is 0, so that's basically canceled. We're left with just negative 8 there. So f of 2 is negative 8. All right, then the last one we wanted to look at is f of negative 2. So again, I'm just going to plug in for my variable x. So negative, then we plug in a negative 2, and that's cubed. Then plus, we have 5 times, plug in a negative 2 for x, then minus 10. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Again, this negative here is inside the parentheses, so it's included. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So I would have the opposite of negative 8, which is positive 8. Then we have 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10, then minus 10. So we would have 8 minus 10, which is going to give me negative 2, and then negative 2 minus 10, which is going to give me negative 12. So f of negative 2, or the function's value, when x is negative 2, is going to be negative 12. All right, so let's look at one more just as a review. If I had something like g of x equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 5, and I wanted to find g of 3, g of negative 5, and g of negative 2, what would I do? Again, I'm just going to be plugging in for the variable. It's not very hard. If I want g of 3... That's telling me just to plug in a 3 everywhere I see an x. So 2 times, we'd have a 3 plugged in there. That's squared minus 7 times, plug in a 3 for x here, then plus 5. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So this would be 18, then minus. 7 times 3 is 21, then plus 5. If I take 18 and I subtract away 21, I get negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. All right, the next thing I want to look at is g of negative 5. Again, all I'm doing is I'm plugging in a negative 5 for my variable x. So 2 times, plug in a negative 5 for x, that's squared, minus 7 times, plug in a negative 5 for x, plus 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. So this would be 50. Negative 7 times negative 5 is positive 35, so plus 35, and then plus 5. So 50 plus 35 is 85, 85 plus 5 is 90. All right, then one final one. We want to find g of negative 2. Okay, g of negative 2. So all I'm going to do, once again, super, super simple. If I have g of negative 2, I plug in a negative 2 everywhere I see an x. So I have 2 times negative 2, plug that in for x, that's squared, minus 7 times, plug in a negative 2 for x, plus 5. Very, very easy. Negative 2 squared, again, the negative's involved in the parentheses, so that would be 4. 4 times 2 would be 8. So you'd have 8, 
Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14, so plus 14, and then plus 5. So 8 plus 14 is going to give me 22, then 22 plus 5 is 27. So pretty easy overall, but something I wanted to do a refresher on before we started kind of going to the next level, in a moment we're going to look at operations with polynomial functions. All right, so the very first thing we're going to learn how to do is adding and subtracting functions, okay? So if you see something like f plus g of x with this notation here, all this is telling you to do is take f of x and add g of x, okay? So all you're gonna be doing is basically combining like terms. It's just like if I added two polynomials together. It's no more difficult, okay? You've just gotta get used to the notation. It's the same thing if I see something like f minus g of x. This is f of x minus g of x. Now it's gonna get more complex because they're gonna ask you for stuff like this. They're gonna say f plus g of let's say two. All I'm doing is I'm finding the function f of x plus the function g of x, and I'm gonna take that result and I'm going to plug in a two everywhere there's an x, and I'm gonna find out what that value is. Okay, that's all this is asking for. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So suppose you see something like f of x equals negative 11x to the fourth power plus 10x cubed plus 14x squared. And you see g of x is equal to negative 2x to the fourth power minus 11x cubed minus 9x squared. Now, the problem we get, we're told to do f minus g of x. So all I'm going to do, this is super, super easy. The order matters. f comes first. So I want f of x, then minus g of x, okay? So what's that going to be equal to? Well, if I have my function f of x, it's what? It's negative 11x to the fourth power plus 10x cubed plus 14x squared. Now, if I subtract away my function g of x, remember, if I'm subtracting something away, we've got to put it inside of parentheses. So this whole thing needs to be subtracted away. Don't make the mistake of just subtracting away the first kind of term there. You want minus, and then inside of parentheses, you want negative 2x to the fourth power minus 11x cubed minus 9x squared. With subtraction, remember the order always matters. So I have f of x here, and then I have g of x here. Okay, very important. If this was g minus f of x, the order would be flipped. All right, so once we've kind of set this up, it's no different than just subtracting polynomials. The only thing you really have to get used to is just the notation involved. Once you get used to what it's telling you to do, the actual operation itself is quite simple. So I would rewrite this as negative 11x to the fourth power plus 10x cubed plus 14x squared. I would distribute this kind of negative to each term. So Minus a negative 2x to the fourth power would be plus 2x to the fourth power. Minus a negative 11x cubed would be plus 11x cubed. And then lastly, minus a negative 9x squared would be plus 9x squared. So all I need to do now is just combine like terms, and I have my answer. Negative 11x to the fourth power plus 2x to the fourth power would give me negative 9x to the fourth power. Then I would have 10x cubed plus 11x cubed. That would be plus 21x cubed. Then I would have 14x squared plus 9x squared. That would give me plus 23x squared. So this is my answer here. This is f minus g of x. Okay, that's the result that you get. It's negative 9x to the fourth power plus 21x cubed plus 23x squared. All right, so let's say we had the same function for f of x the same function for g of x, but now we've changed the problem to f plus g of x. So we wanna find this. So now we're just going to add f of x plus g of x, okay? And with addition, the order does not matter. So I could put f of x first, or I could put g of x first. I would get the same answer, right? It would not matter. With subtraction, the order does matter, okay? So that's where you've gotta pay close attention. So I'm going to start out by writing my f of x. So this is negative 11x to the fourth power plus 10x cubed plus 14x squared 
Then I'm going to add to this, I'm going to have negative 2 x to the fourth power, and then minus 11 x cubed, and then minus 9 x squared. So what would the result here be? Well, again, I'm just going to combine like terms, just like I would if I was adding polynomials. Negative 11 x to the fourth power plus negative 2 x to the fourth power is negative 13 x to the fourth power. If I have 10 x cubed minus 11 x cubed, that's going to give me negative x cubed. And then lastly, if I have 14 x squared minus 9 x squared, that's going to give me plus 5 x squared. So I'm going to end up with negative 13 x to the fourth power minus x cubed plus 5 x squared. All right, so let's kind of take things up just a notch. And let's say we had f of x equals 14 x to the fourth power minus 8 x cubed plus 11 x. And we have g of x is equal to negative 3 x to the fourth power minus 5 x minus 3. Let's suppose you see something like this, f plus g of 2. So again, this notation is just something you have to get used to. Let me think of what in the world does that mean? What it means is I'm going to find f of x plus g of x. And when I get that result, I'm just going to plug in a 2 for x. Another way to explain it is I could find f of 2 and g of 2, and then I could just sum those together. And it's just two different ways that you could achieve this, and I'm going to do both for you. So the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to find f of 2 plus g of 2. Okay, so to do that, f of 2 would be what? It would be 14 times, I'd plug in a 2 for x, so 2 to the 4th power, minus 8 times, I'd plug in a 2 for x, so that's cubed, plus we'd have 11 times, plug in a 2 for x, then plus. Now I want g of 2. So g of 2, I'm plugging in a 2 for x, so negative 3 times, you'd plug in a 2, and that would be to the fourth power, minus five times, plug in a two, and then minus three. All right, so what does this give us? Two to the fourth power we know is 16, then 16 times 14 is 224. Then we have minus. Two cubed is eight, eight times eight is 64, so 64. Then plus, 11 times two is 22. Then we have two to the fourth power, we know that's 16, you multiply that by negative 3, that's going to give you negative 48, so let's put minus 48. Then here we have negative 5 times 2, that's negative 10, so negative 10, and then minus 3. So now we're just going to work left to right. 224 minus 64 would give us 160, plus 22 would be 182, minus 48 would be 134, minus 10 would be 124, then minus 3 would be 121. So this is f plus g of 2. Now, the other way we could have got this, just remember you got 121. Let's erase this. The other thing we could have done is we could have first added f of x plus g of x. If I have f of x plus g of x, this is going to be equal to, we'd have 14x to the fourth power minus 8x cubed plus 11x and then plus g of x, which is negative 3x to the fourth power, minus 5x, minus 3. Again, all I'm looking to do is just combine like terms here. So I put equals 14x to the fourth power minus 3x to the fourth power is 11x to the fourth power. Negative 8x cubed, nothing to combine with that. I have 11x and minus 5x, that's positive 6x. And then I have minus 3. So once I have this result, what I'm looking for is to substitute a 2 in everywhere I see an x. So I'd have 11 times, you'd put a 2 in for x, so 2 to the 4th power, minus 8 times, plug in a 2 in for x, so 2 raised to the 3rd power, plus 6 times 2 minus 3. So the result of this we know is going to be 121. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 16 times 11 is 176. We have 2 cubed, that's 8. 8 times 8 is 64, so we're subtracting away 64. Then we're adding 6 times 2 is 12. Then we're subtracting 3. So 176 minus 64 is 112. If I then add 12, I get 124. If I subtract 3, I get 121. 
So again, f plus g of 2 is 121. All right, so let's take things up just a notch. So suppose you had f of x equals 5x squared plus 14x plus 12, and g of x equals 14x cubed minus 12x squared, and then h of x, a third function, is equal to 7x squared minus 11x. If we wanted to find f plus g plus h of negative 1, what would we do? Well, one thing we could do is we could find f of x plus g of x plus h of x first. And then we could take that result and we could plug in a negative 1 for x. So let's just go ahead and crank this out. So we would have f of x is 5x squared plus 14x plus 12. And let me scroll down plus g of x, which is 14x cubed minus 12x squared, plus h of x, which is 7x squared minus 11x. Again, once I have this notation down, it's pretty easy, because all I'm really doing is just adding polynomials. So my highest exponent is a 3. So let's start with 14x cubed. Nothing to combine with that. I've got 5x squared, I've got negative 12x squared, and I've got 7x squared. Well, I know that 5 and 7 make 12, so 5x squared plus 7x squared would be 12x squared. Then I've got a negative 12x squared. Those would cancel out. Then I'd have 14x and negative 11x. That would give me positive 3x. And then lastly, I'd have plus 12. So what I have now is I have f plus g plus h of x, and this equals 14x cubed plus 3x plus 12. So to find f plus g plus h of negative 1, all I would do is take this, and I would plug a negative 1 in everywhere I see an x. So I would have 14 times, you plug in a negative 1 for x, and that's cubed, plus 3 times negative 1, plug that in for x, plus 12. Now let me kind of slide this stuff down just a little bit. Give myself a little room. So this is equal to negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, so we'd have minus 3, and then plus 12. So negative 14 minus 3 would be negative 17. Negative 17 plus 12 is equal to negative 5. So f plus g plus h of negative 1 is going to be negative 5. All right, so now that we've kind of looked at adding and subtracting functions, Let's talk about multiplying and dividing functions. So we also encounter problems that ask us to multiply or divide functions. So if I see something like f times g of x, this is asking me for f of x times g of x. Again, after you see this enough, it becomes very, very simple. It's just a matter of understanding the notation. The actual operation itself is quite simple. All right, so let's say we saw f of x, which is equal to 2x plus 5, and we see g of x, which is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 6, and we have f times g of negative 1. So what this is telling me to do is multiply f of x times g of x, and I could take that result and plug in a negative 1 for x. The other thing I would do, which might be a little quicker in this scenario, is find f of negative 1, and multiply that by g of negative 1. Either way, I would get the same answer. And again, I'll show that to you. So let's start out by doing it this way. So f of negative 1. If I plug in a negative 1 for x, I'd have 2 times negative 1, which would be what? This would be negative 2. Negative 2 would then be added to 5. That would give me 3. So you'd basically have 3 here times. If I plugged in a negative 1 here, Negative 1 squared is 1, so I'd have 1 times 3, or 3. So this is 3. I'd have 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So this is negative 4. And this is minus 6. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And then negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. So this ends up being 3 times negative 7, which is negative 21. Now, that went by very, very quickly because of the way I did it. If we did it the other way we're going to take a little bit longer for the simple fact that I've got to multiply these two polynomials together first, okay? And that can be quite tedious sometimes. 
So let's do it the other way. So let's say that we said that we wanted to do f of x times g of x, okay, and what would that be equal to? Well, we would have 2x plus 5 multiplied by, we have that other polynomial, 3x squared plus 4x minus 6. So let's go ahead and crank this out. So let me take 2x and multiply it by 3x squared. That would give me 6x cubed. Then 2x times 4x would give me positive 8x squared. Then 2x times negative 6 would be minus 12x. Now I have 5 times 3x squared, that's plus 15x squared. I have 5 times 4x, that's plus 20x. And I have 5 times negative 6, which is minus 30. All right. So looking at this now, I just need to combine like terms. So I have my 6x cubed, okay, my 6x cubed. Nothing to combine with that. Then I have 8x squared and 15x squared. So what that would give me is 23, okay, positive 23x squared. Then next I have negative 12x plus 20x. That's going to give me 8x, okay, so plus 8x. And lastly, I have minus 30. So then once we have it in this format, I would just plug in a negative 1 for x. So f times g of negative 1 would be 6 times, plug in a negative 1 for x, that's cubed, plus 23 times, plug in a negative 1 for x, that's squared, plus 8 times, plug in a negative 1 for x, and then minus 30. So let's scooch this down, kind of get a little room going. So we know that negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. I know that negative 1 squared is 1. 23 times 1 is 23, so plus 23. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8, and then minus 30. So negative 6 plus 23 is going to be 17. 17 minus 8 is 9. 9 minus 30 is negative 21. And look how much longer it took to do it this way. When you're working with multiplication or division, it's generally going to be quicker to substitute in first, then do the multiplication, okay, versus going through and finding, you know, for example here, f of x times g of x, then plugging in. All right, so we have f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. We have h of x is equal to 8x minus 8. We have g of x is equal to 4x minus 1. And we're asked to find g times h times f of 0. Again, I could do this the long way, and I could say 3x minus 5 times 8x minus 8 times 4x minus 1. And then once I get that result, I could plug in a 0 for x. Or I could do it very quickly by finding f of 0, h of 0, and g of 0, and then just multiplying those together. So f of 0 would be what? Plug in a 0 there, I'd have 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 5, so this would be negative 5. h of 0, 8 times 0 is 0 you'd have minus eight or negative eight. G of zero, you'd have four times zero, which is zero, then minus one, so this is equal to negative one. So basically what you have is negative five, negative five times negative eight times negative one. And what's that gonna give me? Well, if I do negative five times negative one, I get five. Five times negative eight is negative 40. All right, so let's take a look at one more and this one's gonna involve division. So let's suppose I have f of x is equal to x cubed plus seven x squared minus nine x minus four, and then g of x is equal to x plus eight. So what I'm asked for, and I'm gonna show you this is on the next page, I'm asked to find f over g of negative four. So what this is saying is I want f of x over or divided by g of x when I get the result, I want to plug in a negative 4 for x. So again, you can do this the fast way. Plug in a negative 4 for x in each function, and then do the division. Or the slow way, which would be to crank out f of x over g of x, and then plug in a negative 4. So let's do it each way. And I'm going to start out with the quick way. So if I plugged in a negative 4, in other words, if I had f of negative 4 here, and if I had g of negative 4 here, what would I have? Well, this would be negative four cubed plus seven times negative four squared minus nine times negative four minus four. 
Negative 4 cubed would be negative 64. So that's negative 64. Negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times 7 is 112. So plus 112. Negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. And then minus 4. Negative 64 plus 112 is 48. 48 plus 36 is 84. And then 84 minus 4 is 80. So I could say f of negative 4 is 80. So what's g of negative 4? If I just plug in a negative 4 there, I know that negative 4 plus 8 would be 4. So now all I want to do, if I want f over g of negative 4, I know it's 80 divided by 4, which is just 20. Okay, so that's my answer. To kind of do this the long way, I would take f of x and divide it by g of x. And again, when I'm done with that, I would plug in a negative 4 for x. And again, you'd find out that the value you get is 20. So let's go ahead and do this the long way. So I would have x cubed plus 7x squared minus 9x minus 4 over x plus 8. Now, what's the quick way to do this? We just, in the last lesson, learned about synthetic division. And we see that we have a perfect scenario for synthetic division. And all I need to do really is convert this x plus 8 into x minus a negative 8. So I could divide this very quickly with synthetic division. I'll use my coefficients here, 1, 7, negative 9, and my constant negative 4. And I'm going to use my value negative 8 out here, put my little line there, drop this 1 down, and I'll get going. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. 7 plus negative 8 is negative 1. Negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. Negative 8 times negative 1 is 8. Then I would want to do negative 4 plus 8. That would give me positive 4. So I already have my answer now. Remember, the degree of this polynomial and the answer is one less than the degree of the polynomial here. Since this is x cubed as the highest power, this polynomial has a degree of 3. The highest exponent is a 3. Here, the highest exponent would be a 2. It's of degree 2. So this would be the coefficient for x squared. This would be the coefficient for x to the first power. This would be your constant. And this would be your remainder. Okay. All right. So if we wanted to write this, you would have 1x squared or just x squared minus 1x to the first power or just minus x. And then minus 1 and then plus 4 over your divisor was x plus 8. x plus 8. So let's copy this. It will come down here. We'll put this is equal to this. f over g of negative 4 is equal to this if we substitute in a negative 4 everywhere we see an x. OK, so if I had negative 4 squared to begin, negative 4 squared is 16. Then minus a negative 4 is the same thing as plus 4. Then you'd have minus 1, then plus. Here you have 4 over, you have negative 4 plus 8. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. 4 over 4 is 1. So essentially you can see that these two would cancel. That's 0. You're left with 16 plus 4, which is 20. And again, that's what we got at the very beginning of this very easily, just by plugging in a negative 4 for x in each function and dividing, right? Dividing the resulting numbers. You had 80 divided by 4, which gave you 20 as well. So much, much quicker to do it that way, but I wanted to go through it the long way just to prove to you that it works either way.